So if you watch my video about Alienware or R7, the desktop PC, there's one issue with that PC in the video, which is the fan noise. Well, the fan noise out of box on the PC is terrible. I mean, did the measurements, it can go all the way up to 70 or 75 decibels. That's super, super loud. I mean, every time when I edit a video or render a video, especially in 4K and I play some games, I just can barely sit beside a PC. The fan speed can cramp all the way up to 100% and the noise level at the time, I just couldn't stay it. And it just like feels like I want to put my earmuffs on and just, you know, that much loud. Fortunately, there's a way we can fix that issue is we can swap the original fans in that case to a much quieter fans from different manufacturer brand. But there is a tricky part not all the fans that can be worked on this PC. Well, some of them can, some of them can't. Well, we'll talk about more detail about the tricky part later on in this video. I think some of you, if you've already done this, or if you're doing this right now, you may have experienced the same issue like I did. This one I'm using is not liquid cooled, and liquid cooled is gonna much quieter than air cooled version, and also the liquid cooled is gonna cost you more. Some of you may comment on the review video said, once I open the case, you see really poor design for airflow. That's because Alienware Aurora, the PC, is not designed to use air cooling system in the first place. It's actually designed based on using water cooling systems. That's why you see the power supply unit is directly above the CPU cooler. There's really tight space between the power supply unit and the CPU. If you really want to swap the CPU cooler, you can only change or to find the low profile sling version of the CPU cooler, and such as the Noctua NHL9i. All right, so let's talking, let's just go straight ready to show you guys how to change the fan on this PC and the tricky part of it. First of all, we need to unscrew the handle on the back of the PC and pull it out to open the side panel. Slide lock to unlock so we can pull up this power supply unit. Now we have the full access to all the components inside this PC. The front and top fans are using this PC are all 120mm fans and the CPU cooling fans is 80mm. They all use four pin connector fans so make sure you purchase the right fan for it. Before I even made this video I've already tried to change several fans on this PC uh, but end up not working properly so I purchased a number of different fans to test it out. The fans I used before was an actual NIFA 12 by 25 PWM fan. Uh, I installed two of them and replaced the front fan and top fan. But every time when I turn on the PC, it will just keep going to support this program and run the diagnostic scan. Then it will shoot you either the top fan or maybe the CPU fan fail to respond correctly. Pretty weird because I know all the fans are installed in there are new fans. And of course the fan is still spinning inside the case. I did check up that. Well, first I thought it was the fan problem. Maybe I just got a bad connector or something. But later on, after I tried numbers of different fans, I just found out this is not the case uh, because this PC, or should I say this motherboard, it has compatible issues with different fans. Well, such as the one I installed in here before, which is an accurate NF like A12 by 25 PWM fan. So after that, I did research by my own and did some testing out. I found out the problem is only to do with the top fan. So which means you most likely should have zero problems to use four pin connector, 80 millimeters or 120 millimeter fans for the CPU cooler and front fans and with the original top fan. But if you change top fan with a non-compatible fan, then the whole system will go wrong. And every time you turn on the PC, it will go to support assist and run diagnostic hardware scan and shows you there's no response for you know some of the fans and I think the compatible issue is determined by voltage and RPM of the fan uh, especially just for the top fan and I found the RPM for the top fan has to be 1700 or more uh, to be able to work so in other hand of course any fan that has lower RPM than 1700 will most likely not work well I know right but I don't even know why Alienware or should I say Dell why they did this um, I'm pretty sure there's some limitation that's built into the motherboard. Usually you don't have this part kind of issues, but in this case you do, so it, it is what it is. <laughs> and of course, this is the main reason I made this video and just let you guys know um, in case if you want to do the same thing. All right, so here are all the fans I tried it on. The Arctic F12 PMW PST CO and the Nactua NF F12 IPPC, Nactua NF P12 Redux or Redux, <laughs> whatever. And and of course the Corsair ML120. And for the CPU fans, I used the Arctic FA PWM and Arctic FA PWM PSTCO, the Actua NFR8 and Noctua NF-A8PWM. 
To start, we need to remove the GPU out of our way so we can have some more space to access the front fan. To take out the front fan, make sure you unplug the cable first, then push the click down and towards inside of the case. Then you can take out the fan cage. And for top fan, there is a screw, so you need to unscrew it to be able to take out the fan cage. All you need to do is take out existing fans and replace it with a new one. And make sure you place the fan in the correct direction. Front fan needs to suck in the air into the case and top fan needs to blow the air out of the case. And be careful when you're taking the top fan out of the cage because the rubbers are holding up the fan are not so strong. I think the quality is just not that good. If you're using too much force, it may easily break off. Because I did that for a couple of times, then it pretty much all broke it off on me. So I just end up to use the screws. Anyway, I tried to use the Arctic F12 PWM PSD Co and the actual NF F12 IPPC. Both of the fans will not work on this PC and it will get a hardware failing warning on the support assist program, which means it's not compatible. And considering the Arctic F12 fans only have 1350 max RPM, so you know it's not gonna work. But both Nectua and FP12 Redux and Corsair ML120 fans are work fan on this PC and they will never go into the support system plan when you turn on the power. And both of them are capable of RPM at 1700 or more. Of course, the Corsair M120 has max to 2200 RPM, more airflow too. But in the end, I still choose the Nectar fans just because they are more quieter fans than the Corsair and also cheaper too. To change the CPU fans should be the easiest part to do. I just unplug the cable, then unscrew it and take out the fan, replace it with a new one plus the cable back, and then that's it, simple. All the 80 meter fans I tried down, they all worked fine, but in the end, the one I choose to stay on is the uh, Nactua NF AAPWM premium fan. It is quiet and has a good airflow from 450 to 2200 RPM fan speed range. All right, so here we go. So now you know everything about how to change fans inside this Alienware Aurora PC. Does not matter if you have R5, R6, R7, or the newer R8 version. They're all the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Harry and I'll see you guys next one. Cheers guys.